Oh, now I got you. Yeah. How's the volume? A little too loud. Brandon. Yeah. Good to see you. Yeah. Yeah. Part of the conversation. This will be fun. So when you talk about those resources, what, what is in fact available? Oh, there are so many, and I know our friends from SHRM and our friends here at the table <laughs> will share some of those, but DOD has done a great job now with transitioning services. No longer do we just send our veterans out. Um, six months prior to ETS, they're in programs to help them prepare. There's financial literacy programs. There's the public sector, the private sector, the government sector with many programs. However, the challenge for many of our veterans is understanding how to find those things. You know, what, what we did in North Carolina is we got the best public and private sector organizations working in this space. The top, I think it was uh, 14 at the start, we're down to 11 now, so we're getting more and more lean. But the concept is, let's work together, right? Take the, our, our Department of Commerce, our Department of Military and Veterans Affairs, our North Carolina chapter from SHRM, take our USO, our military installations, and put them on the same team. And on, on top of that, we, we stopped looking at, at just the veteran in this equation, right? You fix the veteran job seeker problem, it's, a, it's an impact potential of one. Mm -hmm. One veteran, one job. If you go to the HR community and say, you are the gatekeepers into these employers, how do we train you to find, assess, hire, and support talent? Then your impact potential grows to tens and even hundreds, depending on where the particular company is or the job type, et cetera. So what we've done is we've looked at the demand side of the equation and say, how is it that we can operationalize this goodwill? How can we turn what everyone already knows, that veterans get skills in the military, and turn that into a real meaningful workforce for our state? And we've done it in a model that I'm sure we'll talk about a little later, mm -hmm. um, is eminently exportable, that we want to see spread across the country. Hey, Carol, with respect to the, that collaborative process, if you could address that directly, I mean, it, it, it's, it, it's important in any walk of life, but, but, but here maybe more so in some ways. I, I, I'm so pleased you asked that, and Stuart, hats off to you, because there are two parts of this equation. One is the military community, which many, many uh, nonprofits, the government are working towards assisting veterans, but who's assisting the HR community? What are we doing to help them mm -hmm. understand? So when less than 1% serve and less than 7% of our population are veterans, our population's increasing, our veteran population is staying flat, how are we ever gonna increase that, what we call the familiarity gap, so that our civilian private sector counterparts can better understand us. So many studies have shown that the private sector says, we support your service, we honor you, we recognize you for everything you've done, but we don't really get it and we don't really understand how you might fit in our company. People just don't understand. They want to, they care, mm -hmm. thank you for your service, but what are we doing to help them? So SHRM has been very active in that. We've partnered with SHRM to create an HR credential. So there are HR professionals. It, it's a military acumen credential. Mm -hmm. And we started a school for employers called the Psych Armor School by partner with mm -hmm. Psych Armor. So it's all about collaboration. Is. Psych Armor is an institute in San Diego founded by a woman who had to treat veterans coming out of the naval community. So together we founded the employer school. Simple things like how to conduct an interview with military talent, understanding military ranks, so that you don't offer a entry level position to a colonel that just got off of 20 years of active duty. So the simplest things, and I'll tell you what, thank you to SHRM, they are eating it up. F follow up on that, please. It, it's, our, it's our Veterans at Work program, and it's really a program that's designed for HR professionals, for hiring managers, and for frontline supervisors. And just like Carol said, it's designed to basically get them a little bit more familiar with the military. Mm -hmm. What are the military ranks? How do you, um, what are the best ways to interview military folks? How do you tease out from the military folks? Okay, you were an infantry officer, but what are some of those skills that you can bring as a manager in our, our, our facility? Mm -hmm. So to teach folks how to do that. And, and it's been enormously successful, and, and Carol's worked with us, uh, partners, partnered with us on that, and uh, we're moving forward with it. We think it's a great program. As an employer, um, I've hired over 10,000 veterans into my companies and currently mm -hmm. have 1,500 operating, working in my companies. And the, you know, I guess as a, as a veteran myself, I can identify those characteristics and also push down into the organization through the hiring flows of how to identify those things. The two that I put at the top of the table that I think are the most modern and essential are teamwork. Right now, organizations are all team-focused. So if you're a high achiever, 
you know, valedictorian who's used to doing everything by yourself in the library, you're not gonna be as successful as the high achiever who can work in teams and make everybody around him better. Military operators are excellent in teams. To be successful in the military, mm -hmm. you have to be team oriented. And the other is a life learner. And something, something I think is so critical is the cross pollination. Um, when you talk about learning, private sector learning from the DOD, from the military, when you talk about the military learning from the private sector, one of the things that comes out of a lot of these collaborations is our ability to figure out how we improve the entire market. How do we make everyone, put everyone in a better position in, in order to find that job, mm -hmm. to, have, to get the yeah. skills, to get the training? And you pointed out, Carolyn, 7% of the population, right, uniformed military service members, but they represent a diverse population that we can learn something from. We represent that population. But with respect to the programs you're talking about, how does a veteran identify the one that is, one, most appropriate, and sure. two, most beneficial? Right, so there, there are a number of great ways to do that. I know at, at NC for me in North Carolina, we, we created an easy button for job seekers and employers. So the first step is go to NC for me and we'll get you in the right place. We've gotten together with our universities, our community colleges, their great programs on and off base, MSSA, the Microsoft uh, Systems and Software Academy, onward to opportunity training things like uh, programming, uh, program management, cybersecurity, C+, Java, all, all the other different training programs, but ultimately you've got to find your passion. So the Director of Philanthropy for the Navy League of the United States, Kimberly Notariani, is with us today as well. She has a question about how to better advise our transitioning veterans. Kimberly? What do you wish you knew then that you know now as you transitioned out life skill wise? Yes, you talk about transitioning with resumes, transitioning with interview skills, networking skills. What about the practical skills? What do you wish you knew? When I applied for the job I have now at JP Morgan, and this is something that my MVA colleagues will talk about a lot, I was calling everyone sir and ma'am. And uh, they kept telling me, you know, we don't really do Not that here, all. you know, can we stop? And it was very difficult for me to get over it. But the thing that I would throw out to you is, for me, um, workplace socialization was the thing that I feel like I'm probably just on the back end of really figuring that out yeah. because it was just so different um, in the uniform services. There's so much structure around how you mm. relate to, to different people on the team, depending on what their role is and their rank that it was a brand new world figuring it out. If I had to say the thing that I wish that I had known better how to do back then when I first got out, and I got out many, many years ago, but would be how to explain what I did and what I did in terms of civilian terms, but also mm -hmm. how it was related to the civilian world. You know, because if you're, if you're an army officer, or any military officer, you've learned a whole lot about leadership management, team dynamics, et cetera. And I just didn't understand how to talk about that in, in those terms, in those business terms. I could talk about it in military terms, yeah. but I could not talk about it in Good business point. terms. Yeah.